Good morning. Good morning. It's Wednesday and it's great to be here. Great to be here. I'm going to give a second here and straighten up my creative desk as I'm getting ready to share with you another um, class today. I'm glad to be here. You, know, you get working and creating and the last thing I ever do is clean up my desk. Hello, we've got someone here. Go ahead and put your name in the comments. Tell me where you're from. Say hello. It's good to see you. Well, I actually wish I could see you, but it's nice to know that you're here. I can see that somebody is here. And so I kind of, do you remember that? Um, I don't know. Maybe you're not old enough to remember this. Um, but back in the day, I think it was called, I got something in my mouth there. It's called Romper Room or something like that. I don't know. But she had a magic mirror and she would um, get a, get that up there and she would talk and she said, I see Susie. I see John. I see, <laughs> you know what? I wanted that magic mirror so much. It was really, really cool. And I always thought, gee, that would be super neat to have that. I'm going to go in here into my, um, last night I did, I've done a couple of classes here and um my art sisters, which is part of my membership, always they go into our group there. And so they were making comments and I want to make sure that I see those sweet gals because they're uh, so fun to, to hang out with and be with. Hello, we've got someone else. Go ahead and put your name in the comments. Say hello. Just let us know where you're from so I know where that this is streaming out to. I've got it in several locations, uh, different pages that I have. Um, I've got it in my group both groups, my membership, my private membership group, and in the free uh, Kathy Creates, Kathy Freeman Creates group. And so, and I've had a lot of people that have joined that lately, and it's great to have those uh, women in there and to share some of their talents and to just be able to hang out with. Now today, what I'm going to be doing, hello, hello, somebody else is here. It's great to have you. Um, I always like to just take a few minutes. I know this is kind of... <laughs> You're like, oh, but give people a little bit of time here, just a few minutes to get themselves on. While we're doing that, I want to just go ahead and I'm going to just share a few things while I am waiting before I start that video. Yesterday, I did a class that um, I shared. Uh, we created. Where is it? My little pile here. Tonight, I'm going to be meeting with those uh, young women I told you about. I've been asked to go and teach uh, a group of young girls that are ages 12 to 17. And that's always a fun thing to do. And I took, I'm going to take this, I'm going to talk to them about creating art journals and being able to put their their thoughts and their uh, experiences in an art journal form. And so this is the class I went ahead and shared with you yesterday and you'll find it. And uh, on this, this is the one that I actually created yesterday. And I did something with the background. And this is what I want to show you. This is another one I've done with my membership. But I'm going to pull it up close here. Let's see if I can. Do you see the texture? See the texture that's back in here? Oh, it's hard when you're trying to do it this way. There we go. Can you see that texture in the background? That's what we were doing yesterday when I applied, use the stencil and um, you can either use matte medium. I used my uh, clear gesso, something that gives, uh, creates that little bit of rays on the, on the paper so that it creates that surface. Hello, I've got someone else here. Go ahead and say hello. Um, and let us know where you're from because it's great to have you here. Uh, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you today the background that I created, I taught to my group, that um, was used for this particular project. And I think that it would be really neat, and I'll show this again at the end, but I was looking at some of the other projects that we've done, and this little bird with the paper... Um, cutouts of the trees, the branches, I thought to myself, you know, this is a collage background, but it would be kind of neat to be able to use that, put it on. I think it would be really interesting, actually, to put it on a background like this. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start this video and get going. Hello, Patricia. Good to have you. And you're from Georgetown, Texas. Oh, wonderful. I'm in Tyler. Good to have you. Hi, Vicki. Vicki, let me know. Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi. Um, I saw that you had purchased that class um, for the, hello, where are my little gals? Here they are. And I went in and updated the page in that. So if you have any problems or you're having a difficulty or with anything or, you know, the video's not coming through for you or whatever, get send me a little message and I'll help you take care of that. Uh, because I went in yesterday after the fact and made some changes so that it would be more user friendly. All right. Um, it's a rainy here. <laughs> Patricia. It looks like it's going to rain here, too. So this is a great day to be together here, right? And to hang out on um, our little group and to, to share art together. All right. Are you ready to go ahead and learn how to create these uh, this rustic background uh, so that you can use it? I want to credit um, Sandy McTeer. Sandy McTeer is a friend of mine. She is a wonderful artist. And um, I actually learned from her how to create this a while back, quite a while back. And so I've shared it with my group. And I just thought, you know, this is really a neat technique to be able to use for different occasions. And so let's get started with the video. I'll be pulling myself out of this. And I'm going to do that right now, if I can. There we go. And get started. Any questions you have, put them in the comments. All right, we're going to make a rustic background, actually a fence. So I'm going to start with a black, totally black on my, um, and this is mixed media paper. You could do it on something a little uh, stiffer, which would be watercolor paper or some other substrate, but I'm just using mixed media right here. Now I wanted to do this um, with black gesso, which I do not have. <laughs> so I thought I'll just make my own. Um, it's probably better to go buy it, but this is what ended up happening is I took my black acrylic paint and some gesso. And when I put a little bit in there, I ended up with this, see this kind of a nice gray right here. And I had a lot and I thought, well, I'm going to, it'll take probably my whole container to get that dark. So I took a little bit out and I was working with it over here. So this is regular gesso, white gesso with the black added to it, which you can do very easily. If you do not have black gesso and you don't want to go buy yourself a whole container of it, you could make it yourself. If you don't want to use the gesso or you don't have gesso, you could very easily just cover with um, your black acrylic paint. So that gets us started. This is already dried. This is ready to go. My next step is I'm going to take some warm white. This is Deco Art and it's warm white. And I'm going to put it over here on a palette. And what I'm going to do is use a brush that I really don't ever, hardly ever use. But it reminds me of like a makeup brush for your cheeks. See how nice and poofy that is? Um, this is actually says this is a one inch. I've got a couple of these I'm looking around for my other one. It looks just like this. It's not by the same brand. It's a different brand, but it's nice and poofy. And we're going to use that type of brush to create this next step. So I'm going to water down my brush and I don't want it soaked, but I just want it damp a little bit. And I'm going to thin out this warm white. Put it on both sides here and I've moved my paper are actually the fence posts are going to go up and down vertically but when you're doing this it's easier to go horizontal and go um, I'm left-handed so I'm gonna go right to left if you're right-handed you go left to right so whichever you know is the opposite side of your hand Ooh, let's take that extra it's gonna leave a mess all right and we're just gonna go over the black Cover it like so. Grab that paper towel. Okay. 
And the nice thing about using this brush is as you can see, it's creating a grain. There's my finger mark, so I'm gonna cover that up a little. Now I'm gonna turn it and go this side because the heavy, of course, is where you lay your brush down. So get paint on, see what I'm doing here? I'm just getting paint on both sides of that brush. You can see it in the corner there. And I like to usually tape my pieces down, but this one I don't. I'm gonna carefully hold it. There we go. Long strokes. Long strokes. If you can hear that sound, it probably sounds like the ocean to you. That is the wind blowing. I am in my camper art studio and I've got my windows open and enjoying this day. So I hope that's not too distracting to you on this video. Okay, I'm gonna look at that. I feel like I need a little more. Like I don't have it too heavy here and I'd like it a little there we go. Pick up some more of that. And I did some short strokes right here. I would suggest you do long all the way across because it gets that grain, that wonderful grain going just like that. Okay, so I'm finished with that. I'm going to clean out my brush. Okay. Now, this dries pretty quickly. It looks like there's a little hair piece right there. Let's see if I can get to remove that without disturbing too much. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm gonna add something that represents uh, a brown color to this. So you pick what you might have on hand. I'm going to look try this light cinnamon. You could try a, um, a deeper, maybe a raw umber, any kind of a brown that you might have. But this is the one I've got. I'm going to try this and see how that works. Let me shake it up a little bit. And I'll show you this color you can see. Okay, wet my brush just so it's damp and we're repeating the same thing. So let me move this over so you can see what I'm doing but I'm just loading my brush but I've added some water to it so it makes it go a little further. Okay. Start here. Okay, you can see that I need some more paint. I'm going to put it right on top of where I've got. I've got enough water on there. I don't need to add any more water to it. I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And it will be thicker than my first coat. So I'm going to go back over. I've got it on both sides of the brush here. I'm going to go back over where I did this. And it will give... And I'm letting it kind of sputter. See that? Let it sputter. Make your streaks. Oops. Try not to let it move like I did. Because <laughs> you're wanting that up and down. Okay. I'm going to go on this side and turn it. And I really want to get this top area that I don't have much color. So just play with it 
until you think, oh, I, that feels right. That looks right to me. Okay. And as I look up into my camera area on my computer, I can see that down here we need something. So, I'm going to go heavier right there. Now I'm going to grab another color, Let's wash that brush out. This is Chocolate Sprinkle by uh, Apple Bear, but what I'm going for is a little bit deeper of a brown. Add that. Let's just put a little on here. And this type of brush holds a lot of water, so you have to kind of squeeze it out when you're cleaning it. But it's a wonderful brush for creating this kind of texture. All right, load that up. I have my brush is damp. See what we get here. And this will add a, another value, another tone, which is perfect. Because really, trees have so many different, don't they? Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to turn it and we go back the other side. Look in the camera and see. And that looks great. I took a little paint off there, so add that back on. Fantastic. Now, let that dry for a quick second like so and I'm going to put a little dry to it Okay, this looks great now what we have here. Now the next step is you're going to, whoops, I had a piece of white there. That's okay because we'll be adding white. I've got my palette knife and this time I'm going to use uh, white acrylic. Well, can I take that back? Can I grab my gesso? Let's see how much I've got in my little jar here. nice and thick. You want it thick. Okay, we're using our palette knife. And I'm going to turn it at an angle just because that's easier for me. Get rid of that so I don't get it all over me. If there's paint sitting around that's wet. I'm notorious to get it on me. How about you? Okay, so here we're going to just sputter across. See that? You want to glide it. I'm really not wanting to achieve lines like I had going on there. I want sputters like I, that's what's happening now. And if you get too much in one area and you're like, hmm, not really happy with that, just grab your brush and oops, and take it off. I mean, not your brush, sorry, your paper towel. Like that's got a piece there. That's, and this is too strong for what I have here, so I'm going to 
pull some of that off. I'm actually going to dampen my paper towel. And I'm going to just dab it because I want that aged look, but not. Turn it this way. My palette knife is flat. Working it back and forth. Now I've got a line there where I've started, so we don't want that. So I'm going to go the opposite way with it. So we kind of blend that in. There. Okay. Right. Now let's just see what it would be like if I used a uh, white acrylic paint by itself, just so you get a. a idea of that. You could let that white acrylic sit out a little bit. It would thicken. But I'm just going to go straight, get it on my palette knife. like you know a, a, this will be like a fence that at one time was painted white <laughs> and as time has gone on and it's aged that white is f coming off it's faded off okay so think of it that way I like that I like that for right now we'll just go with that let me add a little more up here on the tip of my palette knife. I'm even kind of just juggling my finger, my hand back and forth a little bit because I want it to really, uh, I don't want a nice streak. I don't want a nice streak. I want it, what's the word for that? Jiggly? Will that work? Does that make sense? I want it sputtery. I want it jiggly. Okay. Now you can just think of that and think, okay, that is a fence that needs to be repainted, right? You could even, let's just tie, I have a little bit of that, remember that gray? Just for the fun of it. Now you don't need to do this, but I'm doing it because I'm the experiment here, right? You want to see if it works or it doesn't work. Do it on mine. Let's just put a little that gesso. See how that's it's definitely the gesso's thicker, so I'm having to kind of scrape it a little bit more. So I like the white acrylic actually, because I'm doing this, and I would suggest that for you too, but. Because I like to be able to see through it. I also like that bright white. I like the bright white. Alright, let's clean off our palette now. We're going to dry this. You want to make sure that it's really dry for this next step. Feels like it is. I don't feel. Might be a little bit damp up there.
Okay, that feels like that's our next step now is we're going to make actually the planks. So I'm going to use my Sharpie. You could use any kind of a permanent marker for this. I need a straight edge. And the way I make sure I get it straight is I make sure it lines up here at the bottom. You could use a triangle for this. Sometimes I eyeball it, but you definitely want it. I'm not measuring it. I'm just giving it a nice straight line. Let's see, that wants to move. Let me grab a triangle. Here's my triangle. And this nice tr this triangle is nice because it's got a little bit of a lip. So the ink it doesn't smear the ink when it goes across. Okay, let's line that up. I'm gonna get a nice straight line. Okay, let's hopefully. Okay, so we'll put our. Go over that a couple of times so it's nice and black. Okay, and then we're gonna move it just a hair over. Just a little bit over, and we're gonna repeat that. That makes it nice and thick for the groove. Can you see that? Let's, let's even move it over a little bit more so you get more. I'll just one can be a little bit different, but I'm going to move it a little bit more so I've got a thicker, thicker groove. Ooh, it wants to stutter there. Do be careful as you're doing this. It doesn't like take off and go across your page. That's great. That's exactly what I want. Okay, now this one, see this board can be off on this side, and this one can be off a little bit on this side. So I'm going to make a nice large one here. And let the sides be smaller, like it continues on. Let's go wide on this side over here. So move it over. And go down it again. There we go. See how that's just shaping up nice. And you know, you could even make it a little bit wider. Like some of the fences you see have a, a nice big gap in between. Look, I'm running out of black ink. And it could just be the fact it's going over the acrylic. Okay, that's much better. See the difference? The difference of the wider? I like that. Let's go back over here. Make it a little bit wider. careful as you're doing that because it wants to jump at least mine does when it hits that paint it wants to like take off and jump but that's okay look at that isn't that awesome all right let's move on to the next step our next step is we're going to go back to those original browns that we had and i'm going to take my angle brush and i want a half inch angle brush i'm going to put that color back down I'm gonna go ahead and add just cuz I like whoops that is a lot right let my brush add a little bit to the tip which is called the toe of the brush right here okay I don't have the full brush I've just got the tip of it 
we're going to move that out of the way. We're going to turn it now, like so. And you're going to go straight across on the bottom side of this. And it really needs a little more water to that. So let me water it down a little bit. You want it inky, okay? Now because my brush is full of the paint and I just want the, the toe, I'm gonna scrape off because I can use that. I'm gonna clean out my brush. I don't want the full thing because we're gonna float it, which means it's just kind of like it's right on the top surface. Okay, I want just my toe of the brush filled with paint, not the full thing. And I'm gonna lay the brush flat and go ac down across it. Let's get a little thicker here. Oops. My hand is a little shaky, not really shaky, but it's just. So if you go over the line like I did, that's just take your paper towel, come back and you can lift it off of that. Like so. Okay. Get the tip, the toe, Maybe a little more color than what I've got there. You want, you want enough so you've got color on that toe, but you don't want the full brush because as you pull it, it picks up the back part, picks up and, and makes it a, a lighter, you know, almost that blended out shade. So I'm just getting the toe of the brush. It makes it nice and heavy here at the edge, right next to that black, but it fades itself out. See how it fades itself out? Just put it on the tip, the toe of that brush. Let's start on this end. Okay, now let's do the other side. Just doing the toe, remember the toe of the brush. I want the paint on that. Right there on the tip of it, not on the other end. And then come back with it a little bit. Pick it up. Smooth it across. See that? Kind of blends it in. Adds a little shadow, a little shading to that. Get the tip of the toe. And I'm not going to press really hard right here because I don't want a blob of paint. And whoops, it kind of comes down like a blob, but we're going to work that in. Take some of that off of my brush and go back. There we go. Even it out. Okay. The nice thing about not, see, so you don't have it at the end of your brush here, but it leaves little skid, little skid marks for you. 
See how that picks that up right away. Fantastic. Okay. Looking good. Now I'm gonna go back with, I'm gonna get, put that brush back. I'm gonna go back with my palette knife and I wanna add in the white paint. Well, let's use the warm white. My palette knife, my warm white paint. And I'm going to go flat. Don't get stuck on that edge, be careful of that. I want to lighten this just a little. The nice thing about the palette is it you can scrape it across. Okay, and if you don't like that, I covered up the black. If you don't like that, come back in. I'm just trying to keep it from being too prominent. So I'm wanting a little bit of white in there to take away some of that prominence of that dark darkness. You might like it. You might like it really dark and prominent. There. Took quite a bit of that off. This glare's got it, but see? That also kind of balanced that back out. Let's add a little down here. I'm going flat. I had it at an angle there for a second, but I need to go flat and let it skiff across. And just work it in. Pick some more up on my palette knife. Do it on this side. Too much paint there. Too much. This is where our good old handy dandy paper towel comes in. Okay, we're going to lift some of that off. Pull it quickly before it dries. Get it off that black. But I want a little bit on there. Because it will create a little unevenness. See? There's that. And I'll tell you, I'm not really thrilled about the gray. So I'm going to go back over with the warm white on this gray. And bring some of that wood back in. Take my good old brush. Got a lot of water in it. Pull some of that color back on it. It's pretty inky, which is fine. But I'm going to go back over this a little. Just because I want to pull out some of that brown. And I'm doing it primarily over, just getting the tips of my brush here. I'm gonna dab it off a little though, because I don't want to, I need to brush it off a little there. I'm gonna go over the gray. There we go. Just play with it. Be loose with it, play with it. I'd get you a, a, you know, a small sheet and just experiment with it. There, I'm loving that. Loving that, loving that. Okay, and that is a wonderful background. There, my mic's back on. <laughs> All right, we finished up that. And um, I want to answer some of the questions that came through. There was some questions about what I had in the little jar. What was, um, I take my gesso. Gesso, the thicker the gesso is, the more expensive it is. And so I like to get it in a great big 
containers, but I don't want to spend that, you know, that, that enormous price for the gesso. And so what I'll do is I'll just get an economic, you know, brand type of thing at the craft store of gesso. And then I will put it in a small jar, just extra jars I have. And what happens over a little bit of time is that gesso, I don't know if you can see, but I can turn it totally. Hello, come over here. Let's go ahead. Let me just remove this right now. I'm through with that. Um, I can turn that totally upside down. It is so thick. It's not going to come out of there. And it makes this wonderful gesso. So you don't need to, you know, that's what's in the jar is um, gesso. And I used gesso in the very beginning when I was creating this. And that's what I'm putting on with the palette knife. And uh, it makes this really nice texture. You could also use um, possibly some modeling paste if you had that. But I think the gesso is great. Now, as I went a little bit further in this training with you, I showed you just using plain white acrylic paint. And I, I liked using that. And I'm going to show you now on this um, piece right here. This is white acrylic paint. And this one is different than the one I created. But as you can see, I didn't put as much on this one as I did the other one. The other one is um, a lot of texture in that to it. And this one I kept. So you can really, it's of your own choice and what you prefer, how you want to do it, maybe what kind of project you're going to be doing. And um, some of these questions are coming from my members in the uh, in. Uh, my my art sisters my my art sisters membership and this project is in you can find this in your library this is one that we did uh this past year and uh you can easily find this and then it'll also explain that to you so any other questions that you have i'm happy to answer that and if i've missed you know your question or something that i didn't answer then i'll be uh just come back in and post it and i'll be watching it and answering it as we go along now i want to go ahead for those that are not members and share with you number one i've got a fun thing what size journal do you use great question <laughs> my favorite my favorite size this is personal preference is the seven by 10. That is my favorite size. Uh, I've got it in different brands. I showed you yesterday the one, I've got a lot of stuff around me ladies right now. So <laughs> in my little room here, anyway, uh, I, I liked there's uh, where you can take it and you can uh, just pull out the page very carefully. It's already cut so that it will come out. I like having that out. Uh, one of the questions that came up last night is, do I always frame my artwork when I'm doing it? Now this one, I did not. I did not do that. I wanted it to go to the edge, but typically I do. I just like that crisp, that clean kind of look to it, but I don't always do it. And if the way I do do that though, is I'll use either just plain old, um, <laughs> tape masking tape um some people will use painter's tape but you know this is economical cheap and uh i you i go through a lot of it so i use that uh we talked a little bit last night in the video about how to lift it up and and what we did with that tomorrow i'm going to get back on here um as part of this little opening up my membership week and i'm going to talk to you share how i create trees and that and I personally for me I like to use things that create texture and that because I feel that it adds that that other dimension to it instead of just looking at something and enjoying the uh, artwork on it it almost makes you want to reach in and touch it when it has some sort of a tactile feel to it and so uh, some of the times I don't do it all the time but I will um add modeling paste in that. And I'll tell you how I do this and what I do to do some of that tomorrow. Um, do you prefer watercolor journal or mixed media? I prefer watercolor. Why? Because as you can tell, I use all kinds of things in my mixed media. I do have my mixed media journal. I've used it quite often. It's the one I can't locate right this second in my piles of, of projects here. But um, the paper of obviously is not as thick. And so what I want to go in, I like to do a lot of layering. Um, for example, this one is a layer of um, 
some paper that I created first. Then I came back in and I started doing some work on top of that and ended up using, this is gesso right in here that left that white image that I uh, was able to do through a stencil. Now you can take your mixed media uh, journal and just take the pages and coat, you know, put a, a thin coat of gesso over that. And that will, um, and that will give it a little bit more body in that to it. However, once you start putting something on that, um, the watercolor doesn't work as well with it. And as you can tell in a lot of things that I use, I do like to, I like that flow and I like that movement. I do have some um, acrylic crayons that I use that give that same feeling so I can use that. Okay, Patricia want to know, do you seal your art with anything? I personally do not seal my art. I know that many artists do, and what they seal it with is like crayon, crayon, crayon. <laughs> I won't say that right this moment. Uh, sealer. And I would probably use the matte or just that really satin kind of look to it, unless you're really wanting to come across with, you know, with something. But um, I don't seal these. I don't. I don't. Um, I never have uh, sealed my work per se, but I know a lot of artists do. And, um, and I think that basically comes, my aunt is an artist. My mother's an artist. My aunt's an artist. And um, she never sealed her work. And I think that's just a personal preference, you know, something like that. Um, what else can I share with you? Great questions. I love this. Thank you for popping in and giving me these, these things to talk about here. Um, like I said, tomorrow we'll do that. What I'm going to do is since this membership is only open until Friday evening, um, I'm not going to go into the weekend or anything, but Friday evening. I think that's correct. I look at my calendar <laughs> and um, I'm going to on Thursday send out a 24 hour bonus and I've been kind of holding off on that a little bit and um, I was put out a little bonus on. So those of you that are not a member, you can see that that bonus is watch your emails. It'll come in. It'll be several pieces of work that I've uh, done that aren't really in the library. And for my art members, you will get that automatically. So my art sisters, um, since you are a member already, I'm going to go ahead and just send that to you and let you have access to that. Uh, one of those is I can show you, let's see if I can go in here and share my screen. <laughs> Give me a second. And let's see if I can share. I don't know if I can. Here we go. Let's see if I can. <laughs> this is one that, um, <laughs> there, here we go. Enchanted forest. This one is a fun project. It's got three different videos with it. Um, I take you through starting from the very beginning where we create the background. Uh, and I've got some uh, downloads for you. As you can see, I've used old children's books in here. And if you were to look close at it, you could see the images of the children's books. And so I've taken um, and added those as downloads that you can use. Um, this little gal is a stamp. And so I went ahead and used the image so that you would have her or you could add a different one of your own. And we talk about where these flowers are um, separate. They are not, um, they are added on after I created the background. And so that's a separate video and it's watercolor. And I go through that a little bit with you and just loosely how to, how to create these fun, whimsical little flowers. And then we use, um, I use a little bit of ribbon and um, some different papers and stuff to create this. So that project um, is going to be, oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, that project is going to be one of the projects, but there will be several in that little packet and it will start 
Thursday. I'm going to go ahead and send the email out tonight. It'll start Thursday for 24 hours. And so if you sign up and sign up within that time, then you'll get that uh, 24 hour bonus that's going to be put in there with these extras. And these are classes that I sell separately anyway. Uh, usually they run for about $37 each. So if you are interested, go ahead and sign up. And even if you sign up today, you will still get the bonus because anybody that is a member of my art sisters, that bonus will go to you. All right. Any other questions? I appreciate you being here. It's so fun to be able to share and to just encourage this. Um, who was it? Patricia, were you the one that told me you had rain and it was a rainy day for you? Um, I hope that you have time today in this weather and that to be able to create something and maybe even use, uh, try this background. If you do, go into the free membership and post your uh, backgrounds. Let me see, experiment with it, try. Try some different things and see what creates the texture here is the different colors of paint. And that's what creates our textures. And using that palette knife just makes it easy to kind of skid it across and get the effect that we're looking for, which is rustic and worn. All right, so I will see you later. Look for my emails. If you're not getting the emails, then just look into your spam or into, if you're using Gmail, look into your promotions. Because interesting enough, because I do send it out as a, a bulk into my email list, those that want to be on my email list, I don't just send random people stuff. But if you've signed up for the email list, um, I send it out. And most of the time, it does go to spams. So look there for them and um, see what else. Okay, so it says, thank you, Kathy. Sunny, and uh, let me go ahead and show this. In podcast, I don't even know how to say that. A Pennsylvania today, I'm not sure how to say that. That town, that city. So sorry, I'm so sorry, but I am glad it's sunny. There's nothing like a beautiful, sunshiny day, is there? <laughs> all right, and that's what I want to send to all of you. Is just a little ray of sunshine. Have a wonderful day, and um, I will keep sending emails. And if you uh, have any friends that are interested in joining, now is the time. We shut the doors. I will shut the doors on Friday evening late, but I'm here to share and to talk with you. And thank you for coming on. Pococonos. Poco Poconos. Thank you, Cassie. Cassie is one of the members that she had to leave for a short little time of some personal re reasons, but she came back in yesterday and it's so glad. I'm so glad she's here. I've got some wonderful gals. Um, Cassie loves to create and she shares her work and it inspires us. It always inspires us to be able to see what others are doing. Okay, ladies, have a great one. We'll talk to you later.